Welcome back to the fifth episode of me trying to build a guitar from scratch with very limited space, tools and materials only sourced from local hardware stores. There is a whole lot happening in this episode. We are finishing up the majority of the work on the body, neck and fretboard and we are also making a start on the DIY tuning system. So let's get to work. We are now back outside and we are extremely close to gluing up the body size to the neck. Now the last thing I have to do before that is to carve out the pickup cavity. Alright, so it definitely is not the prettiest job, but it's gonna get hidden anyways. There we go, we have the pickup cavity all carved out now. And we're now back in my kitchen. This is where I'm going to do the glue up. We have the pickup cavity carved out and this is the point of no return. Today, the body sides are gonna get glued to the neck. Now I don't have any of those big long clamps. They're fairly expensive, I don't have where to store them and I'm not gonna use them for anything else apart from this. So I made my own clamping jig. Now what that allowed me to do is make it very custom to my job. Now I have all my surfaces prepared and ready to go. I already did a dry fit and we are now ready to get going with the glue up. Now we don't need a whole lot of pressure with this. As Ben from Crimson Guitar says, if you cannot close up a joint with only the finger pressure, then it's probably not a good enough joint. So we definitely don't want to have that much pressure that the glue squeezes all out. Everything is now all clamped up. If anything went wrong, I guess there is nothing we can do anymore from this point onwards. So let's just hope for the best. Okay, so we unclamped the body and it does look very nice. Nothing went wrong doing the glue up, so everything is good. And now we're going to glue up the fretboard. Now everything is prepared, all the surfaces are prepared. I have some locating pins in the frets here and there, and I have a clamping call with some strips of wood that will press on the sides more than on the center. Alright, so let's get started. This really is the last step before everything is permanent. Have to remember to put the truss rod in before gluing this. All right, this really is terrifying right now. Just gonna double check everything before going in. So the truss rod is in, it sits nicely in here. I am going to put some masking tape on top of it so that glue doesn't get inside there.
right, it looks good. We shall now wait and see the result tomorrow. Okay, and we are almost finished. We have the sides glued to the body and we have the fretboard glued to the neck. This is now almost a guitar. The last thing before that is to actually shape the neck into a proper neck shape. So for that, I will try to use a spoke shape. I have never used a spoke shape before. If it works, it's gonna be great. If it doesn't, I'm gonna go back to the rasp and slowly rasp away at the neck until it's the right shape. And it is done. The neck is shaped. It looks amazing. It feels amazing. I don't know what shape it is. I don't know anything else. I know the dimensions. I know it has 23 millimeters at the nut and 24 millimeters at the body around there, plus or minus. But what matters is that it's extremely comfortable. It feels great. And at this point, we have a guitar. This is it. From now on, it's easy. <sighs> Again, at this point, I can put some of the shelf tuners, pick up, I'm done. But now, I'm actually gonna go and start making the tuners myself. So, <laughs> let's see how that goes. Now, making the tuners is probably a way more complicated job than I could do. But something should definitely come out of this process. Now. This is a first prototype of a tuner that I came up with and it's definitely not my idea. I have seen this style of tuners for headless guitars before. I made this out of a brass barrel bolt and it definitely is not a bad design. The strings would be resting onto this ball and salvage from an old guitar string and you could adjust the string height by turning this screw up and down. You can also adjust the intonation by moving the tuner forwards or back because of this little hole here. Now the ball end of the string would go into this bolt here 
and you tune it by tightening this nut, which is one of these brass anchors cut in half. But there are still so many problems with this design. The string tension would actually bend it up, and it was quite difficult to tune up just by finger tension, so a tuning tool would have had to be made as well. So it seemed that with any problem that I solved, there was another one coming my way. But the biggest issue is that I cannot be precise enough to make six identical ones. There is a lot of precision work here, and my drill bits are not sharp enough, or my drills are slightly not concentric, which is really really not ideal when trying to work at this high precision. So with all this, even though they would have looked very nice, I see myself having to try another idea for the tuners. The only thing I can do now that has high enough precision for this task is 3D printing. And I know it sounds at least weird to think about 3D printed tuners, but apart from buying them, this is my last option of making them with the tools that I already have here. Now I already printed a first prototype and this allows me to learn how everything works together. In this case I can go with the lever type tuner which will make it so much easier to tune by hand. The saddle is the same design as the previous one where the string is resting on a ball and from an old string. I can still set the intonation with a small screw and the string height and radius can be actually modeled into the design. Now you would tune the string by turning this screw and this would provide enough force to actually tune it by hand. But there is definitely a lot more design work to be done, especially for the lever which needs to be bigger and provide more travel for the string. I also need to design another hinge system one that is more reliable because this was only a placeholder to test out the concept. But overall I think this would be a good candidate for the DIY tuning system. Now as you can see there are still a lot of things to iron out with the bridge and the tuners. One other thing that I have to be careful about with this bridge is actually finding a way to connect all the strings to a common ground. Now if this doesn't work I will have to try something else, but I still hope that by next week I will have a complete DIY bridge and tuning system. As always, if you want to follow along to this epic build, please subscribe, like the video if you liked it, thank you all for watching and I will see you next week.